Hey y'all, it's me again, Valerie, and welcome back to my yarn room. Yay! All right, I guess y'all see what I got here. Would y'all like to get started on how to make my cardigan? Now, I don't know if this is somebody's pattern or not. I do not know. I just whipped this up. I got inspiration for it from other cardigans that other people made, but I've never seen anybody make one with this stitch. And I love this stitch. This this stitch is totally underrated for what it is. It, it's beautiful. All right. We're going to get started with the ribbing on the bottom. Because we're working this from the bottom up. Now, I think today all we're going to do is the, the back panel. I don't know the measurements and the stitch count and all that for any other size other than a large. Because that's what I'm wearing. So... That's what I did mine in. So, I know the stitch count for it because I took notes on what I did. Alright, hold on a minute and I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. Before we go any further, I would like to invite anybody who hasn't to hit that subscribe. When you do, give us a thumbs up. Share if you can. And leave me a comment. Alright. Before we actually get started on the cardigan, let me explain a few things. Okay. Like I said, this pattern will be for a large. I will give simple instructions throughout this series on how you can change things if you want. Like, if you wanted a bigger size, it's easy to adjust. But I don't know the, the count other than a large. Okay. This is a cardigan with a pocket. On the front panels, there's a pocket on each side. Okay. Um, I used... An H five millimeter crochet hook. And the yarn is Line Brand Mandala Ombre in the color, I believe it says Mantra. I don't know. It might be Mantra. I, I don't know. Anyway. Um, okay. So, for the ribbing on the bottom, let's get started. Because I'm already almost four minutes in and I haven't done nothing. Alright, let's make us a slip knot. Now, you can do the ribbing on the bottom starting it out in two different ways. You can do a chainless foundation. Or you can do a chain and just work from there. Either one is perfectly fine. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to chain 11. Okay, because I want 10 single crochets, so I chained 11. I'm going to turn it over to the bumps on the back. Right there's your first bump, right there at your working yarn. I'm going to go to the second bump from the, the hook, and I'm going to put 
a single crochet. Now, I'm going to single crochet one in every single bump all the way down. All right, meet you back at the bottom of that. Okay, I'm all the way back down here at the bottom. Now, what I did was after I put my last single crochet in, which gave me 10 single crochets, because that turning chain does not count as nothing. It's just a turning chain. So, 10 single crochets, because we chained 11. I chained one. Now, I'm going to turn. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into the back loop only. No. Duh. I'm lost. <laughs> okay. The first one, I'm going in both loops. And I'm going to single crochet. Then, I'm going to go into the back loop. One in each for the next eight stitches. Just came right out of my yarn there. Good gracious. Don't y'all just hate it when that happens? I did it again. Alrighty, almost there. One more. And y'all are thinking, but you've got another stitch there. Yes, I do. Which is crisscrossed. <laughs> okay. Now, in that last stitch, we're going to do the same thing we did in the first stitch. We're going to go in both loops. And then we're going to chain one. And we're going to turn. And then we're going to do, do the exact same thing again. Both loops on the first one. Back loop only for the next eight stitches. And then on the last stitch, we're going to go in both loops again. And you want to do that for the size large. You want to do that for a total of, let me look at my paperwork, 90 seven rows and like I said that's for the size large now if you want this a smaller size say you're a size small well fit it to your body do however many rows that you need it for the back panel to fit across your Backside. Don't worry about what my stitch count is. Because my stitch count, if you're small, won't fit you. Or, let's just say you're a bigger size. Well, then you do more than 97 rows. But here's the trick. In order for the pattern to work out, you need it to be an odd number. Here we are at that last stitch again. So we're going to go in both loops and then chain one and turn. Now what that does by going in both loops on the sides, it gives it a straighter edge than what it would if we went in back loop on the sides. That's all that is. It just cleans up the edges. 
Okay, so what I was saying was, if you're a bigger size, do more than 97 rows of this. Um, just make sure you make it in an odd number of rows. Because after we get that done, then we are going to turn it to the side and we're going to put one stitch in each row, single crochet, all the way down it. So remember your stitch count. Use your stitch counters. Write it down on a piece of paper. Uh, matter of fact, I do this a lot. For how many rows? Draw a line. Draw a line. Draw a line. Draw a line. And put one through it. That means that I, that's five rows. There's 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45. So I do that a lot. If you don't have a stitch counter or a row counter, whatever, do it that way. All right. And I'll meet you back when I get a couple of rows done to show you what I'm talking about, about going down the side, doing um, single crochets down it. All right, I'll be right back. All right, I'm back. And uh, obviously, I'm not going to do a full 97 rows because, well, I've already got my back panel done. Okay, but this is how you count your rows just in case you didn't know. Okay, you see how this one goes down? Okay, that's row one. And this one's raised up, so that's two. And then this one's down, that's three. Raised up, four. Down, five. Raised up, six. Down, seven. Raised up, eight. And then this one's down, so that's nine. Because remember, I said in an odd number. Okay, so all I did was when I got to the end of that row, I chained one. Okay, now, instead of working back this way again, I'm going to turn my work to where the side of that ribbing is facing me or facing up well i'm gonna go down right there in that one and I'm put a single crochet well that's for that row now i gotta go to the raised row right here and put a single crochet And then I got to go back to this down one here and work a single crochet. Well, I got to come back here to this raised one and put in a single crochet. Just pay attention to your rows of where they're at. That way, evenly spacing, you get all your cro single crochets down the side. I got two more. Sometimes it's difficult to get your hook in there right where you want it. But if you take your time, generally you can get it. And on something like that, you actually do want to take your time and make sure that you get one single crochet in every single stitch. So let's count and make sure I got it right because you know I had nine rows. So 
One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, so now we're going to chain one and we're going to turn that. So now we're going to start with the pattern of the piece. What you do is you go into the first stitch, you make a single crochet. Then you yarn over and you go into the same stitch, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. So you got a single and a double in the same stitch right there on the very first one where you did the chain one. Okay, so then what you want to do is you want to skip that next stitch, go into that next stitch, and put a single and my yarns need to be pulled a double okay so then you want to skip that next one go into the next one and put a single and My yarn keeps splitting. Well, no, it don't keep splitting. I just split it. Okay, so a single and a double. So then, skip that next one. Go into that next one. Single. And double. And you want to do that all the way down. However many rows of the ribbing you did to fit your body. Like I said, I did a large, so I did 97 rows of the ribbing. Okay? But you notice we only got two stitches left. So what we're going to do is, that that's the pattern right there. Single double skip single double skip when you get to the end of however many rows you did and you got two stitches left you want to go into that last stitch and only put a single crochet then you want to chain one turn and that's the same pattern you're going to repeat over and over and over. I went in the first one right there where I chained one. Put a single. And a double in that same stitch. Now you notice we did that in a single. Okay. Well this stitch here beside of that is going to be a, your, going to be your double. You're going to skip your doubles always and go into your singles and do that pattern again single double skip your double go into your single and now see you can pull it apart to see your stitches better to make sure you're going in your singles and you do that all the way down till your last stitch right here on the end. And on that one, all you're going to do is put a, a single crochet. Chain one and turn and repeat the pattern. Now, for a large, I wanted mine to come down right somewhat at the top of my booty. So... I did 58 rows of this pattern, which this pattern is called the thicket stitch. So I did 58 rows of that, st that pattern. Okay, now I'm going to explain something. The front 
panels are started the exact same way. The exact same way with the ribbing. Okay? And I've got wrote down, say, I just wrote, hand wrote notes. I've got wrote down here for the front panel. You make two. Okay, because you got to have one on each side. <laughs> All right. Um, to do it the same as the back panel, but I did my ribbing for 39 rows. I know, that's not half of 97. It leaves a little bit of a gap because... What I'm going to do is I'm going to go up one side of my front panel with a ribbing across that little gap of the back where your neck rests and back down the other side of the front panel, okay? And I'm going to do that probably... Eight to ten rows of ribbing. I wanted like a, a little bit of a collar on my cardigan. Okay. So, if you get the back panel done and you want to start on the front panel, if you want to do it the exact same size as mine, which is a large, I'm doing mine with the ribbing down here at the bottom, 39 rows for each front panel. Okay? And then when you start on the thicket stitch here for the, the front of the pa front panels, I'm only going up about 12 rows from the ribbing. Because I'm going to put pockets in mine. And I will come back on here tomorrow. Hopefully. And show you. How I'm going to put the pocket. On the front panel. Okay. So. If you get the back panel done, you do the front panel the same way. If you're making it a large, you do it 39 rows. Put you a single crochet all the way across the side here of the, the ribbing. Start your thicket stitch and work the thicket stitch up for 12 rows on each front panel. And then we'll start to pocket. If you don't want pockets... Don't worry about the pocket. Just keep working the thicket stitch all the way up for your total of 58 rows to meet the same length as the, the back panel. All right, but I will come on here tomorrow and I will show how to put the pocket in for this size. All right, y'all. I will meet you back here in the next one for another grand adventure right here in Val's Yard Room. And don't forget the yay. All right. Love each and every single one of y'all to pieces. Do something nice for somebody, even if it's just a smile. Alright, bye y'all.